nearly 60 years, Clements has been the concrete company of choice for owners and contractors who require dependable service and the highest quality product. Our goal is to provide a durable, long-lasting concrete that will provide years of service. We make certain that our state-of-the-art plants produce clean, washed, and properly graded aggregates, which are crucial in providing the highest quality concrete available. Our customers can rest assured that all Clements concrete designs will receive a full measure of cementitious material. Here in Idaho, we have one of the harshest concrete environments in the entire world. The combination of rapid changes in temperature, severe freezing, and heavy applications of road salt all contribute to the unsightly deterioration of concrete surfaces. Concrete in warmer climates could be mistreated in many ways, which in Idaho would result in complete failure. A well-trained finisher knows that the prettiest driveway is not always the most durable. Creativity and inspiration must take a back seat to hard work and consistency. Preventative measures to help eliminate cracking, settling, or curling, etc. will not be discussed at this time. This presentation is only designed to emphasize the correct procedures necessary to help prevent scaling on a concrete surface in Idaho's severe freeze-thaw environment. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Many of the decisions that are made before the concrete arrives on the job will affect the outcome of the placement. When ordering concrete, it is necessary to know what type of concrete to ask for to ensure that you are getting a product appropriate for Idaho's severe climates. All exterior flat work should be air entrained. Air entrainment creates tiny microscopic bubbles which allow water to expand as it freezes instead of exerting force on the concrete. Without the proper air, these forces can cause concrete to scale and crumble. When ordering concrete for exterior slabs, be sure to specify an air entrain mix. It is also important to select a mix that will be strong enough to last many years. Concrete that will experience freezing temperatures requires a minimum of 564 pounds of cementitious material per cubic yard. This is usually referred to as a six bag mix. For added strength and assurance, a 611 pound mix or a six and a half bag can be used. One of the most important aspects for a durable concrete surface is to place the concrete at the stiffness or the slump that it was designed for. Generally, exterior concrete is designed to be placed at about a four inch slump. Slump tests are performed by filling a slump cone using ASTM standards. The molded cone is then raised, allowing the concrete to subside. The vertical distance between the original and displaced position of the center of the top surface of the concrete is measured and reported as the slump of the concrete. Exterior concrete should be placed at a 4 inch slump. This particular test reveals that the concrete is being placed at a 6 inch slump, which is not recommended in Idaho's harsh climate. Placing concrete more than about 1 inch greater than its designed slump may greatly increase the ease of the concrete placement, but will have adverse effects on the finished product, particularly at the surface. If too much water is added at the job site, it dilutes the fixed amount of cement that is present in the mix and could result in weak, non-durable concrete. Weakened concrete cannot adequately resist the effects of heavy salt solutions and repeated freeze-thaw cycles. Aid in placing concrete should come from additional laborers, not from increasing the water content of the concrete. Before the concrete arrives at the job, 
all site work preparation must be complete. Delaying the placement of concrete could result in air and slump loss and decrease the ultimate strength and durability of the concrete, especially the surface. It is also important to be sure that all of the tools and materials needed for the job are on the job site and in good working order. Valuable time can be lost if the required tools are unavailable or in poor condition. In addition to your finishing tools, you may also want to add to your list hoses, hand saws, hammers, extension cords, buckets, curing blankets, curing compounds and dispensers, form oil, oil and fuel for compactors and other power equipment. You may also want to include in your list a tarp or a large sheet of plastic in case of an emergency or sudden storm. Concrete placements need to be protected from the elements. Sunshades, windbreaks, checking the weather forecast, etc. are important pre-placement activities. An evaporation retarder is sometimes used when conditions of heat, wind, or low humidity are present. Hot water, accelerators, and concrete blankets will be needed at low temperatures. If temperatures become too cold, it may be necessary to wait for a warmer time of year to place concrete flatwork. Before placing concrete, discuss with the owner or builder the risks of pouring in hot or cold weather. Be sure to determine who is responsible for the protection of the green concrete. Concrete produced by Clements is a cohesive mix that is not prone to segregate. However, proper placing techniques should always be used. Place the concrete as close as possible to its final location. The more it is moved, the greater the chances of segregation. Start by placing concrete in a corner of the slab and working your way out. Always deposit concrete from instead of towards previously placed concrete. When placing, do not allow the concrete to fall more than two feet. Always use the proper tools to move concrete. Square mouth shovels and concrete rakes will work best. Do not use garden rakes as they will cause segregation of aggregates. A straight edge should be used to strike off the surface of the concrete in order to assure that the proper elevation is achieved. Either manual or mechanical strike-off tools are acceptable, providing that they are clean and true. When using a straight edge, you should be sure that there is always enough concrete ahead of the tool to fill voids and prevent low spots. Remember, proper drainage will help prevent surface saturation. Surface saturation can result in failure during freeze-thaw cycles. Following the strike-off procedures, a bull float is used to remove small irregularities in the surface. Most local finishers use magnesium bull floats for this purpose. Bull floating should be done before bleed water appears on the surface. If bleed water is floated into the surface of the concrete, the surface will be weak and prone to dusting and scaling. Likewise, spraying water on the concrete surface will also compromise its strength and durability. While bull floating, do not seal the bleed water into the concrete. Sealing the surface before bleeding stops may cause blistering or surface delaminations. When circumstances require, a scaled concrete slab can actually be tested to determine if the water cement ratio of the concrete was too high or if bleed water was compressed back into the slab during the bull floating or finishing process. This petrographic analysis can also determine if the concrete froze within 24 hours of being placed. <laughs>